stop right there, prepare to fight or pay the toll to get across. As Red runs off to his home, making way for you to cross the bridge, an evil grin slowly starts to form across your face, knowing that that would work. Where well, you were the culprit all along. I've got to admit, I never knew much about the Dungeons and Dragons, but I have heard of it of being some type of board game, and that's where my education basically stopped with this game and Baldur's Gate takes place in that universe and after playing this game I was amazed by it with the rich lore and the storytelling I just couldn't stop playing it it consumed my life for days and I've got to admit that the owlbear it looks cute I've got to applaud the artists who came up with that Baldur's Gate 3 is a story intensive turn based RPG with remarkable and difficult choices to make on your journey throughout this game what was made by Larian Studios for the story, the Mind Flayers are one of the main enemies of the game that are abducting and infecting people with the Mind Flayer Parasite. Unfortunately, your character has been infected with one of these parasites that will turn your character into a Mind Flayer through metamorphosis. Except you and some others manage to escape while the ship is under attack by the Githyanki. Then the ship goes spiraling out of control and crashes into the land. And that's where you start your journey of trying to find a way to remove this parasite out of your brain before it turns you into a mind flare. But of course, nothing is ever straightforward as it seems, and you end up finding out about this cult of the absolute, where some of them have this parasite as well, except no one seems to be turning into these monsters when they should have, and that's including you. And then I started to feel like Alice in Wonderland as I started to go down this rabbit hole, finding out about the artifact that one of your companions is holding, is protecting you and others in your party from being controlled and turned into a mind flare. Also, this artifact has a person inside of it what acts like a guardian who invades your dreams at night, kind of similar to Freddy Krueger in the movies. I came just in time. You are transforming. Yes, you have. I saved you before. And I'm here to save you again. I adored the fact that I can create and customize a character with their own story or choose a pre-selected character what can also be your companions in the game. For me, I played as a Dark Urge because of that backstory because that seemed to be the most intriguing to me where it seems like someone are fighting against their nature or am I going to embrace my nature? My rancid blood whispers to me kill, kill and kill again My ruined body yearns to reap death in this world and when this foul urge calls it possesses my whole being Injured beyond repair. I know nothing besides this. I must resist the dark urge, lest it consume my mind. I must discover who I was and what happened to me before my twitching knife hand writes a tragedy in blood. The character customization is impressive from choosing the many races that I can play as, from drow to half old to a tall gremlin. I went with the Dragonborn race. I always appreciate creating and customising my character's appearance. I love that the game lets me have free range with this. I was in the character menu for some time and had a lot of fun with it. Yet there are some things that I can't do like fully customise the body. There are class types to choose from, from druid to paladin to monk to warlock and so many more. I went with the sorcerer because in short I enjoyed magic and fire and the game also allows me to multi-class and reclass my character at will, just in case I might not get along with the one that I chose from the start, or if I wanted to try out a different class in general, 
And I like the fact that the game allows me to do this once when I got that dead guy into my camp. For the controls, most of the time I was using the controller and I did feel it was a bit restricted compared to the keyboard and mouse. The reason I used the controller was comfort when my legs were on a desk with my chair in recliner mode. Apart from that, the controller was all right. Although now and again, I did have to switch back to the keyboard when a puzzle came up. But when I was using the keyboard and mouse, the controls did feel so much more better. The combat is a turn-based system and you can have up to four companions in your party alongside summons if you choose to. And there are advantages and disadvantages in combat. Like if you're on higher ground, usually I got the advantage on the range attacks. And there are can trips that don't use any spell slots. There are short rests that recover some health and full rests that recover spells and health. As long as you've got the camp supplies to do so, you can use full rest near enough anytime. I relish in the leveling up mechanic where I got to choose a new spell and swap out old ones for new ones and choose what perk I wanted when they came up now and again. And I enjoyed that I could use the parasites to unlock more of these illithid powers. The role playing in this game is amazing, especially with the choices and consequences. And I'm going to have to go back after this vid and play as a pure evil character and see the outcome to all the choices and how much different I can make everything. Oh, it is fun. My queen. Skarthai. You are permitted to look upon me. You are invited to kneel. The deathless queen has spoken. You will obey. Although there are skill checks as well in dialogue, specific to your character and class, and there is so much dialogue options. A couple of times I had to reload it to see how much different I can make it, and the choices that I made, yet I was surprised by how much I could change. I haven't felt dissatisfied with choices and consequences in games since probably, what, Dragon Age Origins? There are roll of the dice mechanic what affects speech checks in dialogue, and in one case I convinced this mad doctor to kill himself, and I notice in situations like this I can have up to four rolls, as long as I unlock them by making companions inspired by something what I've done. But I found that I can only carry four of these re-rolled dice mechanic, what made me spend it wisely and like, yeah, no, oh, sorry, I'll just reload it. I like that the game did give me the option to do that of reloading it at any time. And I'll be honest, I did do that quite a few times. For the enemy AI, I think that it works well. Just now and again, it did take a bit of time for them to figure out what they were gonna do. And in the meantime, I was kind of like waiting for about 30 seconds or so. And I thought that the game froze at one point, but it's like, nope, they just were thinking what they were going to do. Nevertheless, this does happen rarely. It's just something to be aware of. And the AI I found to be of solid and made every fight interesting to me and made me use my brain more often than I wanted. I never found myself going on autopilot like on other games. The boss fights can be challenging, especially on the hardest difficulty, but my favourite one's got to be facing that Grim Reaper type of thing. That thing just looks badass with its Dorito shaped hat and fighting this thing, I just found it exhilarating and like, I can't believe it. <laughs> The level designs are these sort of open maps throughout your journey. I've got to say, the world design is huge and I enjoyed exploring it and finding out all these secrets to uncovering these stages. I never found them boring and I discovered that each location was very unique and interesting. For the main content, it can be split up into three acts. The Tieflings and the Goblins, the Cursed Lands and the City of Baldur's Gate. I found it to be extremely easy to get sidetracked though from the main missions. I remember this one part where I was walking past this bar and I was on the mic to my friend at the time, talking and being shocked. What was behind these closed doors? I just couldn't stop laughing. And my friend was saying that I sound like a chipmunk down the mic. This game knows not to take everything so serious all the time. It knows when to have fun with it and it knows when to be serious. 
There are two paths what can be missed is when going to the Cursed Lands is the Giffy Yankee and the other is the Underdark. Two different ways to get to the Cursed Land. Except I would call these an act on their own with the heavy story elements in them if you choose to interact with the residents. And I adored that I could go back and explore the other paths as well. As I was exploring the Underdark I found these talking mushrooms and they got their own backstory going on there. And then I met the fish people what was worshipping a gnome sort of type of thing. <laughs> and the thing was none of these felt like miscellaneous quests even though they were miscellaneous quests it's just they just didn't feel like it they were so well written because I found them interesting with their own touted tale it shows how much passion what was in this and I can't forget that the Necronomicon made an appearance as well Necronomicon ne Necronomicon no, fuck it the book the CG cutscenes at the beginning of the game had me so immersed into it that I couldn't look away where it kind of like this horror vibe to it then it goes right into the action very quickly with the dragons and the living ship. And the rest of the cutscenes are in-game scenes and the body language and facial expressions are excellent and well performed in these scenes. The party characters have their approval and disapproval on what you do throughout the game and each of them have their own personality and what they approve of. And the companion members have their own missions as well what adds to the backstory. <laughs> A very interesting one like the Starion with the head vampire or who he wants revenge of or the tiefling what's got a mechanical heart from a hell itself what is called a vernus in this I think I found the characters to be one of the best things that this game does really well from your companions to every character that I met throughout the game and is it just me or does the kit gear kind of look like a gremlin I really want to know if anyone else got that vibe apart from me Although my favourite side character's got to be the Hag Raven on the way she talks to my character like a spoiled brat. And <laughs> I intimidated her. That bit just made me laugh so much. You greedy little bollocks. Fine. Here. Also, the three ogres, when they are chatting and discussing what the tiefling tastes like. Also, I've got to say, is it me, or are all cats psychotic in this world, or could it just be the ones that I'll talk to? Yours is a face I shred in my dreams. One who kicked the steel claw as if I were some stray. I am a champion hunter. When I lick my pelt, I taste blood. Ghost dragon, harbinger of death, child of the end. The tower feared you so, but one day I shall pry you apart, scale by scale. Fortunately for you, the slithering vermin I hunt has my attention, for now. The voice acting is remarkable from talking to the main characters of the game to random people, I really can't praise it enough. And the dialogue is outstanding and well written with all the options that I can add. For the graphics I was impressed by it, especially on the characters where I could make out their veins and the deep texture on their clothing where I could see every stitch on it and some of the world environments have so much details to them. And the good news is that I was playing this on my 3080 to 12GB overclocked version and I could max this game out at 4K and I was achieving above the 60 frames until about Act 3 where there are so many pedestrians it started to take a hit to about 40 then it jumped back up to 60 or 70 that's when I turned on that NVIDIA DLSS and made some tweaks. So my minimum frames were around about 80 then. So in all, I didn't really find the game that demanding. For the soundtrack, it is brilliantly done. I loved it. It interacted with the stages perfectly. Our Lady of Silver, hear me. She who guides the Moon Maiden Saloon, mother of the so-called Night Song, the Night Song is... For along the game is I clocked on around about 85 hours or so and I could have easily spent more time in this world. So in the end I thought that this game is brilliant and definitely robbed me of my social life for a while. 
So what do you think of Baldur's Gate 3? Leave it in the comments below. Until next game, I'm starting another playthrough. I remember this one part in the Cursed Land that I kept on hearing me oh my oh my oh me after when I got this item and I couldn't figure out what the hell was going on. It took me about an hour, maybe two, to figure out it was the lantern. <laughs> that just annoyed me. I was putting up with that me oh my oh my oh me for two hours. I just... <laughs> oh. Turns out it's the fairy in the lantern. Yeah. Got to admit, I never knew much about the Dungeons and Dragons, but I have heard of it of being some type of board game. And that's where my education basically stopped with this game. It's something with the 12-sided dice. I think I heard of it way back in Futurama when they did the 12-sided dice thing. And that's really all I knew about it.